Genesis. Why are you baking rocks? Not just rocks, stromatolites. From Yellowstone? Of course, let me show you. We collected the stromatolites from here, in this area where the land meets water. Artichokes? Stromatolites. Domed structures with layers that originate out from a point. Like an artichoke heart? How do stromatolites form? There are different theories. Some are formed by mineral sediments which harden into crystalline structures, eventually becoming rock. Others believe that microscopic organisms called microbes help to build them. They rise to the surface because they are attracted to light. Then, sediment particles stick to their hairs and solidify, what we call precipitation. Sometimes the microbes are in these filament tubes. The tubes get left behind as fossils. Let's look at some with the SEM. Yay, yes, the SEM. Here's an artichoke stromatolite from Obsidian Pool. Look at all those tubes. But why are you baking them? First, to kill off any living organisms. <laughs> then, diagenesis. I'm baking the young stromatolites to simulate what could happen to them naturally over millions of years, in this case by adding intense heat. Examining how their shape and mineral makeup changes over time can help me to understand what the ancient stromatolites might have gone through. And it helps me understand what the whole environment might have been like way back then. When? Well, the ancient samples from the Green River Formation are about 50 million years old. Whoa. Ah! The last stromatolite is ready. It's been baking for 160 hours at 220 degrees. That's amazing. Hmm, interesting. Photosynthetic algae built those shells you see there. But where are the tubes? The heat must have destroyed all traces of microbes, including tubes. Unbelievable. Triangular forms. The spaces where the tubes were are now filled with crystals. The amorphous structure has completely changed. It's the first time anybody has performed artificial diagenesis on stromatolites. Very interesting. I, I love science. science.